There might be fewer players, but there's never a lack of exciting action. This is the statewide Idaho 8-Man PrepCast with Brandon Bainey and Paul Kingsbury. That's right. We've got the heavy hitters here on the Idaho 8-Man PrepCast uh, at IdahoSports.com. This is going to be a weekly show where we dive into those 1A programs throughout the state of Idaho, those 8-Man football programs. Brandon Bainey with Paul Kingsbury. I'm of all the prep casts we're doing, I think this might be the one I'm most excited about. Well, me too, mainly because, you know, you and I are doing it together and that's always a lot of fun, but it, it is. I mean, I, I've never, never hid the fact that I love eight man football. Um, it, it's just always been my favorite brand of football. We love doing those, those kind of games. It's that hometown feel. It's the, it's just, it's more personal, I think, than going to those big stadiums and, and, you know, watching football, you know what, there's people lining the field. You're in the stands with people. They're they're friendly. I, I just love eight man football, so I'm really going to enjoy this this year. Now this will be this isn't just during the football season. Once we get into yeah. basketball and and into the spring sports, we'll talk about those one A programs yeah. uh, as well there. So uh, it's just eight man prep cast because stylistically that works, and we're yeah. coming up on football season. Yeah. I can't I can't believe football's almost here, Paul. Oh, you what know if, what I know. You know, a year ago we were wondering what was going to happen. We, you know, we were keeping tabs on everything. And, and here we are a year, year later and kind of doing the same thing. A couple things going on between referees, uh, you know, um, trying to uh, in- increase how much they get paid, which I think rightly so. Um, you know, we've got smoke in the area and, you know, COVID maybe. So it's, it's, it's not as bad as last year, but, you know, this year went by very, very quickly. So you're right. You know, we're already in August, three weeks away. Um, as of right now, from our first uh, football games, a couple of weeks away from our first, uh, you know, soccer and volleyball. So it's coming up quick and there's a lot left to do. Yeah. So let me ask. So this was going to be originally just kind of a light introduction to yeah. what we're going to be talking about and kind of you can get an idea of what to expect format wise. But there's been a couple of like things in the news that I, I feel like we got to talk about because okay. it it affects eight man athletic programs especially in district three. So let's talk about, you mentioned COVID-19. There's this new, uh, ver- the Delta variant, yeah. uh, which, you know, depending on who you ask is, is uh, a threat or not a threat, but, um, it seems like every school district in the state of Idaho, at least is shaping up some sort of plan kind yeah. of similar to what we saw last year, where there's different phases and, and depending on the numbers, things could change. Right. But w- what are you hearing, especially over in district three, because that seems to be our most heavily populated area. In District 3, it's kind of all over the board from what I'm hearing. You know, the Boise School District uh, just yesterday, day before, um, said, yep, we're going to be wearing masks. Um, I've seen other school districts um, release things that said, we respect your right to wear a mask. Uh, We also respect the right of others not to. And so as of right now, it's going to be all across the board where some schools do, some schools don't. And and I think a lot is going to depend on on what things look like in, in a month. You know, if you look at the U.K., the Delta variant hit hard and then it's going away. So if it does the same thing here, it could be on its way out and it's just a big knee jerk reaction, but it's better to be prepared, err on the side of caution. I get that. But, um, you know, it, it, I'm hoping that, uh, that we, we kind of do what the UK does and it just kind of fizzles out and, uh, and, and, and goes away. I just, I, I can't stomach another season of the constant starting and stopping. And so I just, no. I, I hope no, for everybody's no. sake that we're able to just have a nice season unimpeded. Yes. But. Uh, me too. Me too. So the other big story that's kind of come out in the last week or so in district three is um, there is a disagreement between the referees, the officials and the, who, who pays the referees? Is it the schools? Is it the IHSAA? The schools, the schools pay, pay the officials during the regular season, but those, you know, those numbers are usually negotiated and, and figured out. And so, uh, each and each board of control can um, negotiate with the um, officials association in that district. And, and, you know, it's just a, a tiered level of um, a bureaucracy and, and that's just the way things work and it's the way they should work. And so they're the officials from what I believe were supposed to redo a contract last year with COVID. They said, okay, we'll hold off. Okay. Well, after that year, they're back saying, okay, uh, let's do this. And uh, here we are three weeks from the start of the regular season. And uh, they're not, you know, they haven't decided what they're going to do yet. So it could get interesting the first couple of weeks. And there's going to be people, you know, camping out on both sides of, yeah, the referees, 
they deserve to get paid more for all the crap that they have to endure, all the work they do. And the other half that says, you know, hey, the kids are the ones that are suffering here, which, you know, both are true. But OK, you know, those that are saying that, OK, get off your couch and go get certified to be official and go do it for free and donate your salary back because, you know, if that's the way you feel. I, I'm in favor of, of the, the officials, you know, getting paid for for what they do. And uh, and, you know, it might increase the number of officials we have. You know, um, there's officials getting older and the younger ones are dropping off because abuse, <laughs> lack of pay. Uh, so, you know, if you know the causes of the attrition, great, fix them. And uh, and there's a couple of great ways to do that. And that's to, uh, you know, bump the bump, bump the pay. Yeah, I mean, we saw in baseball and softball season where games that were scheduled for a Tuesday night either got postponed to a different date or flat yeah. out canceled because there were not enough umpires. Right, and and it's not just a problem with a specific sport. It's a problem with all sports that have referees. Um, soccer, football, volleyball, like you mentioned, baseball, softball, basketball. There's a lot of games that go on every night, and there's just not enough referees to go around. When we saw some games that had to be pushed back because the official crew was referring somewhere else before those games. So some of these officials, you know, are pulling double shifts, um, you know, on a weeknight and they, you know, they work their shift normal job during the day. They're going to go work their job the next day, but you know, they're more than pulling their weight to make sure these games happen. And I think it's, uh, I think it's okay to compensate, uh, you know, co compensate those guys for all the time they put in. Yeah, you know, uh, we we tend to stick to sports here. We don't get too political on things, but I I will say uh, that not, I not not on non air on air. <laughs> we, we get political sometimes, but right. Try to hide it. I I think what uh, we're seeing with these District Three officials is a microcosm of what we're seeing nationwide. You know, uh, everywhere you look, businesses are trying to hire. They can't find employees. Yeah. They can't find workers, and. Some of it, you know, depending on who you ask is, oh, well, the government is giving them all this assistance and they can make more money staying at home than working. That might be part of it. But I think another part of it is people have decided that in order to go back to work, my wages need to be higher. It's And it's right. not worth it for me to return to work at a, a low wage. And we're seeing more and more employees holding out for higher standards. And I think that's sort of what's happening with the officials in District 3. Oh, it is to a, to a, uh, you know, a certain extent, you know, this was happening before COVID, um, you know, the, the pay um, argument was happening, you know, long before, especially when um, they decided to do three referees, you know, they went to, we're going to pay two and a half, which means some places actually got paid less. Um, officials got paid less when they added that third referee because they said, well, you're not going to work as hard, which doesn't make sense to me at all. I mean, on the other hand, you know what? If you're an athletic director right now and you're saying, man, I hate that Paul Kingsbury, I get it where you're coming from too. You've got a certain budget that you have to manage. And, uh, and uh, you know, like any employer, you've got a budget for employees. And in order to keep good employees, you've got to pay those employees to do the job. And, you know, if you came to me one day and said, you know, Paul, I, I can't do it for this. You know, I'm going to walk out. You know, I, I would sit down and say, okay, hey, let's talk. I'm not saying that you need to do that. Or anything i was saying <laughs> we would need to talk right you, you want to keep good employees and so it's kind of the same thing with schools and officials is you know if you, you've got to at least meet them halfway and uh and you know figure out something that works for everybody so those are kind of the big stories that are affecting specifically district three and i wanted to bring yeah. those up because there are so many um of those eight-man programs you yeah. know you think of garden valley and wilder and yeah you know, schools like that Tri Valley that that could potentially be affected by absolutely. You know, those of you know they live, you know those those towns. Garden Valley is is out there. Um, you know, Salmon River is, is out there. Council two hours from Boise, and the officials that go there are typically um, from the Boise area. I mean, you might get an official or two from there, but those officials are driving to Eastern Idaho, going to Salmon, going to Chalice and Mackey. You know, they're driving two, three hours sometimes to get to where they need to go and then turning around and driving home. And yeah, they get compensated for that, but uh, you know, the driver does, but you know, it's what I'm thinking is, you know, just take into account everything that's going on and uh, just be fair with everybody. And I think it'll work out. So barring any unforeseen problems and yeah. assuming things get resolved, we should have a full normal season, which for yes. the smaller programs is, it's going to be really nice because 
I know last year a lot of schools struggled to fill the schedule with yeah. opponents and things like that. Oh, they did. You know, they really did, especially those schools that um, tend to, you know, fill those gaps without a state games, you know, Oregon, um, Washington, especially, you know, they were, they were shut down. So we, and also week to week, you know, I've, I've said it before last, last year was the wild west here in the state of Idaho with games, because normally if a game gets canceled, it's, Oh, you know, what happened? You know, it's canceled now or last year it was, you know, Wednesday, it gets canceled Thursday. They find somebody else and they say, Hey, we're going to play you on Friday and they do it. And so, uh, you know, it was, I hope that doesn't happen again because it was difficult for everybody from our point of view. It was very difficult because we're looking for scores and going, Oh, they didn't play. They didn't play each. Oh, they, they played this person. And so it was, it was a constant game of, of Jenga trying to figure out all the scores and schedules across the state. So if we can all just please play who we're supposed to play every week, that would really help us out a lot. If anybody cares about that. <laughs> right. And, and to me still, when you look at eight man football, the most fascinating team to me is, Mullen St. Regis, the co-op of an Idaho school and a Montana school and St. Regis making that drive every day over the pass, uh, to get into Idaho. And, but they got all the way, uh, to the semifinals last year. Did really well. They did. And I was, I was at that semifinal game at Dietrich. Um, you know, they were snow plowing the snow off the field beforehand. It was cold, um, really snowy. Um, but you know, they came out and, uh, and, you know, I talked to Stetson Spooner for a little while, their head coach and, you know, heck of a guy. And he, he said how great it was for those, um, St. Regis kids. And they really try to accommodate things and, and they love it. They, they love the co-op. It's working well for everybody. And, uh, and they had a good team. They got a good program and it's growing, um, you know, by all, all looks of, of the preseason, they, they could be back in that position again. You know, there's a lot of really good teams, um, in that classification, of course, but, uh, you know, Mullen, used to be just kind of the the blot on the schedule not anymore i mean they're a, they're a team to be reckoned with yeah it's it's going to be really fascinating so i i grew up in montana obviously so i know yeah. st regis really well and my my wife is from a small town in montana called alberton and alberton and st regis are probably like 30 miles apart from each other and and alberton doesn't have enough players to field its own team so i asked i said well, why didn't they team up with St. Regis instead yeah. of St. Regis going all the way to Idaho to play? And that the rivalry is so strong. The impression that I got was it'll be wow. a cold day and you know where before those two schools. Really? Co-op. St. Regis would rather go play with an Idaho team than go play with their longtime rival Albertson. So. Wow, that is incredible. That That's some serious uh, dedication to the rivalry right there. Yeah, so that's definitely a, a one storyline we're going to keep an eye on. Uh, yeah. Another storyline that I'm excited about this year for 1A and 8-man are programs that have been dormant for a while at the varsity level, having enough kids to compete. Yeah. And I think I think right away of Meadows Valley, which is going to have right. a football team, a varsity team for the first time in like 20 years. Yeah, the Mountaineers finally getting a, a football team. It's been, like you said, a very, very long time, a long time coming. And I think it's great. You know, when you can get – the bodies into a small uh, town to do that. I think that that bodes really well because over the past 10, 15 years, what we've seen is those small towns getting smaller and the big towns getting bigger and, you know, teams going up in classification and at the very bottom going down in classification because they're just losing kids or not playing, you know, Cascade uh, is going to be um, co-oping their football with McCall because they couldn't field a team. And so seeing uh, Meadows Valley come out, and hopefully they've got enough kids that they can weather the storm of injuries um, and things like that where they can play an entire season. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, let me ask you uh, just philosophically. So in Montana, where I'm from, co-ops are pretty common. Like a lot of small schools will band together. You'll have three or even four high schools coming together to field an eight-man team. In Idaho, there, there aren't many in and schools want to hang on to their personal identity. Do you ever see it shifting to co-ops or do you think it'll just continue to be, if we don't have a team, we don't have a team. I think we've seen the shift start, you know, but way, way back in the day, you know, 20, 25 years ago, you, you really didn't see it. And slowly but surely it's happened. And we've seen co-ops come and, and, and go away, you know, Butte County Mackey a few years ago made it to the championship. And then the next year it, it, it broke apart. Um, you know, you see Tri-Valley, um, a co-op, you see uh, Lewis County, um, up in District 2. Uh, and, and I really think that, unfortunately, I think we're going to see more of that, you know, especially in the, in District 4, uh, maybe District 6, where those uh, 1A teams are really prevalent and spread apart. Um, and it makes it hard um, for everyone involved uh, because 
you know, if you're a, a salmon or in a chalice and you want a co-op or, you know, you're a Murtaugh Hanson or, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, you want to have that your own identity. You want to keep that for as long as you can, but you also have to balance that with, we want our kids to have the opportunity to play sports. And so what we, what do we need to do to make that happen? And so as, you know, unfortunately, as we see the smaller towns getting smaller, though, I think those co-ops might get more prevalent. Yeah, that'll be something to certainly keep an eye on as we get yeah. further down the road. And in football, especially, the numbers are tough. In volleyball, yeah. you can you can have small numbers as long as you've got, you know, eight to nine players, you're going right. to be okay because you only have six on the court at any time. But but football, you need eight at least. And that's, you're really playing with fire if you, if you don't have many more than that, right? Right. You, you don't have a lot of season. I mean, I'm not making fun. I'm being serious. You don't see a lot of season ending injuries uh, in volleyball or as many as you do in football. Um, and so you can, you can get away with those lower numbers uh, a little more uh, safely than you can in football. Uh, and so when you're, you know, when you're playing with, you know, really under 15, you're like you said, playing with fire. I, I saw Sam and River win a championship. I think they had 13 guys on the sideline and, and that was years ago. Uh, but really that's a minimum. I mean, you got guys getting tired, uh, you know, they're playing on a full field with six fewer guys. And so it's uh, it takes a toll on everybody. And, 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 you know, you've got to have those numbers or else like, like we've seen in the past cascade um, other teams, they, they play a week. Oh, we don't have enough guys this week. We can play this week, uh, but we can't play this week. And that just, you know, wreaks havoc on everybody's schedule, especially when you get into uh, conference time where those conference games really matter. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely important to have as many players as you can. Yeah. I remember, uh, I think it was two years ago, the Salmon River girls basketball team made it to state with six players. Yeah. And and I think really it was five and one was like kind of injured, but was giving it a go. And so yes. it was incredible. Yeah, I, I, I think we did a story on that, actually. I think uh, Brandon Hill wrote something or we, we had someone, but um yeah they were it, it's just always incredible to see uh kind of the perseverance that these kids have you know i think that you you see these you know big 5a 4a rosters with 80 80 kids and then you see you know you go to an eight-man game and you look on the sideline and and maybe there's more water boys than there are subs on the sideline and a couple more coaches it's it's just amazing that these kids go out there and they give it not just 100 percent you know they, they give it everything they have to uh Every, every game because they have to. And if, if they don't, the team doesn't play. So there's so much on their shoulders. It's, it's a big responsibility for those small school kids to do it. One other thing I really enjoy about the 1A eight-man programs is the, the players, uh, a lot of them work. You know, I've had yeah. coaches tell me, I kind of schedule practices around if the kids are helping out on the farm or if, they're, yeah. if I'm going to have enough players to practice because they all have jobs. Right. And good for them, right? Yeah. And, and a lot of times, like you said, on the farm, they have to not really a job. It's, you know, the family farm and that's what they're doing. You know, that that's what they do. The family farm has to come first. So, you know, to see these coaches understand that and work around it, <clears throat> excuse me, is, is, is great to see. I mean, some coaches would just be, listen, you're going to be at practice and no excuses, but yeah, you get in these small towns and there's a lot of different dynamics you have to work with and kids working is definitely one of them. Yeah. I think the, the best story I came across last year that had to do with that is uh Cammy. I had a senior named Bodie Norman. He, did football baseball and he worked for Simmons sanitation and great sponsor of, of yeah. ours on Idaho sports.com. And he, he worked, he would get up and work from like six to eight in the morning and go to school all day. And then he would work from like four to six at night and, and then practice and do homework. And uh, yeah, it was pretty incredible to see for sure. Day in and day out, rinse yeah. and repeat. You know, that's what they do. There's, there's not much else. And so it's in, and as soon as football is over, most of these kids go right into winter sports, wrestling or basketball. Uh, in order to make sure that their their schools have a team, so it's uh, it, it, the eight the, the eight man schools, the one A schools. Um, that, that's why I love them. There's a lot of heart. There's a lot of dedication. A lot of passion involved with it, and I, and I I like to be a part of that. Yeah. So uh, every week here on IdahoSports.com, we're going to be breaking down the the best stories, the best moments. Uh, basically get you caught up on what you need to know about those eight man ranks, the, the class one, a action. There's yeah. going to be some eye popping performances because there always is at the, at the smaller yep. levels, less, yep. less defenders you have to worry about. So it's a lot easier to break off a big play. Yep. Um, and, and that's what we're going to do every week, Paul. We're going to be basically giving a summary of the big stories that happened the week prior, and then tell you kind of what to keep an eye out for in the week ahead. Yeah, a absolutely. And it's going to be uh, work, but it's going to be fun because there are, Unfortunately, not a lot of media outlets that, that give the eight-man schools 
uh, the 1A school is a lot of coverage. And so finding those things is is more difficult than seeing, you know, go to the front page of the sports section in your local newspaper and you see, you know, the 5A, 4A, 3A kids and the games and, and whatnot and results. And so, you know, if you're a, if you're an eight man program out there, if you're a 1A school, um, you know, don't ever be afraid to contact us and say, hey, you might have missed this. Check this out. You know, whether it's a player, a coach, um, a, a team, a school, something happening in, in the town, let us know. You know, let us know and, and, and we'll check it out. And, and if it's something that, uh, that that's worthy of the, uh, the prep cast, we'll definitely throw it on there. I mean, it's uh, having that feedback with the fans and the parents and the schools is going to be key, I think, to make this work. Yeah, it's, it's going to be fantastic. And if, yeah, you can e- send me an email, Brandon at IdahoSports.com, B-R-A-N-D-O-N at IdahoSports.com. Or you can uh, email Paul as well, editor at IdahoSports.com. Uh, or, yeah. or send us a message on Twitter, Facebook, whatever, uh, the IdahoSports.com yep. social media. So We're pretty uh, easy to get a hold of. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're around. That's yeah, for sure. we're around. Yeah. So speaking of social media, uh, a couple different ways that you can get the eight man prep cast each and every week. You can yeah. get audio only on our website, idahosports.com. You can also download the, uh, the prep cast wherever you download your podcasts from. Uh, if you want to see the video of it, uh, you can see uh, Paul with his nice Mountain Dew hat. Now, let me ask you real quick. Yeah. The tatters on that hat. Is that from hard work or did it come pre-tattered like that? It, it, it came pre-tattered. Oh. It, it came that way. I yeah. used to think you were cool. But. Well, see, if I, I have hats that, that were naturally tattered, but they have like sweat stains all over them. <laughs> and so I really don't like wearing those, uh, you know, doing stuff like this. But I do plan on wearing this every show. It's just uh, I, in, back in the day, we used to do the Friday Night Flash overtime show. And uh, I did it with Jeff Duncan and Matt Harris and, different people i always wore a red hat and it was just because i had a red hat and it kind of became the shtick that i just wore the red hat and so i was like you know we're gonna get back into this uh i'm gonna i'm gonna get a red hat and i figured you know me me promoting the the lifeblood of idaho sports mountain dew uh, i thought it was pretty uh apropos yeah so if you want to see paul's poser pre-tattered mountain dew hat you can (laughs) <laughs> each week we will have a video of the eight man prep cast as well on the idahosports.com youtube channel as well as our facebook page so no excuses all right lots of different ways yep. you can get the content each and every week i thought you were going to jump in and say something there oh i got nothing you are the man here i'm just following your lead my friend Okay, that sounds good. Uh, I think I think that's probably it for this week. And next week, we'll really start diving into previewing, you know, who are some of the eight-man teams we're going to keep an eye on and, and some of the players and, and coaches, the big stories uh, heading into the season. Uh, if you can't wait till then, just check out idahosports.com, uh, our season previews for every football team in the state of Idaho. We're continuing to add more and more every single day. So if your favorite team isn't on there yet, just keep checking back and eventually it will be. And uh, we're also getting all the schedules put in at idahosports.com as well. So a busy time of year for us, Paul. Very, very busy time. And, you know, you're up early and and working late. I'm up early working late. And, and, uh, but gosh, you know, when it, when it all comes together, you know, it's fantastic. The, uh, the the party never ends here at idahosports.com. The road goes on forever and the party never ends. That's right. It's a, it's a nonstop party at idahosports.com. Thanks for uh, listening slash watching to the, uh, watching the Idaho eight man prep cast. We'll see you back here next week.